All right, now moving on to card draw. Um, the obvious thing to do here is to find creatures who have an ETB and cantrip. Um, once again, trying to take advantage of uh, Libio's ability to utilize that ability a second time, and Halana's ability to make that creature um, deal damage equal to its power to a target creature. Now, I know Wall of Omens and Wall of Blossoms are defenders. They can't take advantage of Halana's ability, but the fact you're getting an 4 blocker um, for two mana that's also replacing itself with a card, I, I think these can't be overlooked. Um, I would consider them must includes. Um, so, yeah, there, there's those two to start. Now, in the same vein as Wall of Blossoms and Wall of Omens, you got cards like Elvish Visionary, which is a 1 1 and does the same thing. Um, Land of War Visionary, which could also be considered a ramp card and does, does the same thing, drawing a card but for three mana. Um, Sky Scanner, he's, you know, not great, but he's a 1 1. Uh, flyer and still draws you a card and then I think this card kind of fits the description in the Raven Inspector um, he's a one two for one and he gives you the artifact that you can um, investigate with the clue token and I think that's a, a pretty viable way to get card draw in white <laughs> um, so yeah those are essentially the ETB guys now these cards kind of fall into an ETB category. Uh, Fierce Empath, he's technically not drawing you a card, but he is fetching you a creature. Um, so he is putting a card into your hand, and, you know, as is the theme of this deck, uh, Livio and Halana can take advantage of the fact that he is a creature in doing that. Uh, same thing goes for Militia Bugler, who, when he enters the battlefield, um, you... Uh, you can look at the top four cards of your library, reveal a creature card, power two or less from among them, and put them into your hand. Now, most of the creatures I've just shown you are all um, two or less, so he, you know, kind of does the job, and once again, is repeatable with Livio. Now, this card doesn't actually draw you a card, but I think it fits the deck theme pretty well in Charming Prince. Um, being able to scry to, gain some life in a pinch, or he's got the flicker ability. So, what's to say you got something like, I don't know... Great Oak Guardian, you know, in, in play, and you do whatever you're going to do. You attack, and then he comes in at the next end step and untaps all your stuff. You know, I think uh, I think Charming Prince is a, is a pretty solid, like, include in this deck. He's very versatile, and just a, just a cool card. And, you know, he, he's, a, he's in that, that range where he's got that, the two power, so there, you know, there's going to be other cards that he can kind of uh, work with, like Militia, Militia Bugler. Um, the next category I have for card draw would be cards that um, take advantage of things entering the battlefield of a that fit a certain um, stipulation. So Bygone Bishop here says, when you cast a creature spell with converted mana cost 3 or less, you can investigate. Now it's a cast trigger, so I don't know if he's going to make the cut, but he still... You know, there are a lot of cards you have to cast before you can start taking advantage of Olivia and Halana. So, I don't, I don't think he's awful. Um, and he still will get you some token uh, card draw uh, with the clues. Uh, Mentor of the Meek. Just an amazing uh, white card draw card. Uh, but he says whenever another creature power two less enters the battlefield. So, he will take advantage of Livio, uh, Livio's ability to, to flicker stuff. Um... Garuk's Pack Leader. Uh, we don't have a lot of things with the power three or greater, but we also haven't gotten to like our win cons and whatnot. So I think um, the Pack Leader is is something that is is worth considering. Um, he is five mana. He's also an uncommon. Then he's a four four body. So if you got the extra mana, you can use Halana's ability and make him take something out. And then this card I think is an absolute must include. It's a budget rare. Uh, and that's Soul of the Harvest. Um, six mana for a 6-6 six, six elemental with Trample. Whenever another non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, you may draw a card. So he will work with both of our commanders. Um, he takes advantage of all the ETV guys who are coming in and drawing cards or, or fetching lands. Or, you know, once we get to the removal section, doing that kind of stuff. 
uh, just an all-around awesome card, and I think he's like part of like the core engine. Um, that being said, if you have the budget to go even harder, um, Great Henge <laughs> is kind of a uh, soul the harvest on crack. So, um, you know, the fact that the Great Henge itself is, I don't know, it's arguably the best green card ever printed. I, you know, bought a bunch of them when it first um, debuted. I think it debuted at like 15 bucks on Card Kingdom. Uh, I bought four, uh, and then I've gotten three out of packs since then, and uh, I've never, you know, regretted <laughs> paying that money up front for it, because this card does it all. It's such a great, great uh, card, and, you know, it's a shame it's in green. I wish it was in white, but, you know, I'll take, I'll take what I can get. Um, moving on. Uh, we have this concept, which is taking advantage of the Monarch ability. So, Pal Sentinels are a creature. They make you the Monarch. Entourage of Trust, creature, make you the Monarch. Um, both, you know, synergize with our commanders. Um, I think they're great budget options, you know, if you don't want to go this route, which would be Court of Bounty and Court of Grace, both making you the Monarch. Um, but with the added bonus of their, their secondary abilities, uh, Court of Bounty being a, at the beginning of your upkeep, uh, you may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield. If you're the Monarch instead, you may put a creature or land card from your hand onto the battlefield. Which, you know, I'm not going to lie, I'm including Court of Bounty in this deck because I want to give Halana some, um, some power. So being able to just drop like a bomb onto the battlefield and just paying two mana to have it take something out, uh, I think, uh, is, is a pretty, is a pretty good deal. The Court of Grace, you know, it's, it's white card draw, um, from being the Monarch. And then, you know, at the beginning of upkeep, you can create a 1-1 Spirit, um, which, you know, once again works with Halana. Uh, but if you're the Monarch, you create a 4-4 Angel instead. Um, so, I don't know, I think there's, uh, both awesome cards, definitely worth considering including. Um, next category I have here is just spells that draw cards. I don't have a lot of these. I, I'm just going to talk about two. Um, Explore. Um, like I said earlier in the ramp section, the creatures that come into play, fetch a land to hand. Explore, you know, will replace, you know, itself and also let you play an additional land on the turn. So I, I don't think it's a bad, I don't think it's a bad card. But this card I think is wonderful. And that's uh, Return of the Wild Speaker. I can't say enough good things about this card. Um, now, both of our commanders are human. Uh, so that's kind of a, a weird stipulation. But, you know, going back to, you know, Great Oak Guardian, um, he, he pumps himself. <laughs> so <laughs> playing playing Return of the Wild Speaker and drawing six cards isn't too bad. Um, so, yeah, that's uh, definitely a card worth considering. And then the last um, section I have here for card draw is removal card draw. I know that sounds kind of weird, but I found this card uh, in my pile, Viridian Rebel. Uh, whenever an artifact is put into the opponent's graveyard from the battlefield, you may draw a card. Now, I know when I play Commander, almost every game an artifact gets destroyed. Um, and we haven't gotten to the removal section yet of this like you know, deck building video or whatever, but I can tell you right now, we're in green and white, so we will be destroying artifacts uh, quite often, and uh, hopefully multiple times with the same card with Livio. So I think this is definitely something worth uh, thinking about to include. And then the last one, this is a, uh, a white staple in my decks. Um, I pretty much put Oblation in every white deck that's either mono white or two color white, just because with Oblation, it's it's a chaos warp and a pinch, okay, um, or you can protect your own creature, shuffle it back into your own deck, or permanent, you know, in your own deck, and then draw two cards from it. So it's instant speed. It's I don't know, everything about this card is great. It, it's a very good white flavor as far as a uh, you know a weird stipulation to do something that white doesn't normally do. And, uh, yeah, I just, uh, I think Oblation's great, and um, I can't recommend it enough. So, um, I'm going to stop here, and we're going to come back and do removal.